Hey guys, welcome to episode four of Filter. We're almost at five episodes. And that might not sound crazy to some people, but you know, it's hard to stay motivated. It's hard to uh, stay productive. But all the kind words about the podcast that you guys send through really helps me remember to do it because I got to be motivated to stay consistent and that can sometimes, you know, it can sometimes be hard when you're having a big week or you're doing other things or you're tired because of being out shooting or, you know, there's a heap of different things that can sort of easily steer you off track. And I record these week by week, not by, you know, big batches. So each and every week, I need to sit down and find time to record an episode or it just isn't coming out. Like, they don't put themselves together. Um, I know you guys know this stuff, but, you know, it's up to me to do it. No one else is going to do it for me. So, you know, that's sort of where we were led into this week's topic. So... I got this, I got this, uh, notification on Instagram and I opened it up, said like someone had mentioned me in, in their story. And this is what it said. It was like a photo and it just had like white text over it. And it was like this story and it says two years ago this week, I bought my first camera and I started doing music photography. It was always something I wanted to do and something I always saw other people doing and thought, man, that would be really cool to do. I remember dating a girl who did photography and for some reason thought that I'd never be able to do it. Fast forward a year or two, I can't remember. I was like, ah, fuck it. I'll do it and see what happens. I did my research and got the camera I wanted and a 35 millimeter lens and off I went. I've never been to school for it, as you might or hopefully might not be able to tell or been taught anything other than conversations from friends and other photographers. I quite literally winged my whole way here making mistakes and learning from them. Granted, I don't have a big following or do all the big shows like the people I look up to like Matt Walter or Kane Hibbard, but doing it all on my own, I'm pretty stoked. If anyone's wanting to do something about it, but just don't know how, just give it a punt and see what happens. That was so cool. That was so cool to read because, you know, that's how I did it. Just finding some info that other people were willing to share and then just figuring it out. There's so much information out there and you're listening to one of those many options right now. No, the filter podcast is that. The only thing that holds you back from progression is yourself and your excuses. So this episode, let's look at some ways to improve your productivity. Improved productivity means you feel good and you get more done. And that means that you get more opportunities to create more content or make more money. So here's five tips. These are just the five tips that help me. So hopefully they help you. It's just some knowledge sharing. If there's something on the list that, you know, if there's something that's not on the list, let me know because I want to be more productive. Everyone does. All right, number one, use a to-do list. So everyone has a to-do list or it seems like it. That's You know, you're crazy to go through life without a to-do list, right? Whether it's one on the fridge or whether it's a, you know, something on your phone. But how many people actually use one properly? There's this secret that I use to keeping myself productive with the to-do list, you know, and a lot of my friends, they don't do this. And they, they are always the ones that are saying to me, I feel like I'm not getting anything done. So what I do is if I complete a task that I haven't even written down on the to-do list, but I've done it, it's something I've done that day, I write it on the to-do list and then mark it off. Even though, you know, it wasn't on there and I had done it, seems like wasted time. 
but it helps you feel as efficient as you actually are. Otherwise, if you don't fully account for everything that you're doing, you know, you might be left with some tasks left over for the day on the list that you had there when you woke up and it might eat you up thinking that you didn't get anything done but you actually did get things done. So categorize your to-dos by client or by genre so you know where your time's going. And it'll also tell you which areas need a little bit more time dedicated to them. But I really think that if you accurately represent the work that you're getting done, you will feel a lot more productive and you'll be able to You know, you'll be able to feel good about waking up the next day and being okay with seeing some of the things that were left over from the previous day because you'll also see things ticked off that you didn't even have on the list when you woke up. So definitely do that. Makes me feel awesome. Number two, keep your online storage neat. So I use Dropbox. If you use Google Drive or you use, you know, something totally different, Amazon or something, you just got to keep it neat because otherwise you're going to lose things, you're going to have duplicates, you're going to run out of space a lot quicker. I've got my folders set up so I can either easily send a client a collection of photos from a specific shoot or I can send them a link to the entire collection of shoots that we've done together. So the way that I've structured it is Dropbox, which is the main folder. And then inside that are all my other document folders, including a folder for photography. And inside that photography folder is a bunch of different stuff, like things for my website, everything that's photography related. But there's also a client folder. And inside that are all the clients that I've worked with. So, for example, I'll have a folder called Violent Soho, and inside that, I'll have 2014, 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018. And inside each of those are the individual tours or shoots that we've done. So, if they say, oh, hey, uh, do you have anything from, you know, 2016 that would suit this purpose? Immediately, I got one folder that I need to go in. So I've, you know, taken my workload down so much. Or they might say, remember when we did that beer, do you remember taking a photo of this specific thing happening? Yep, I know exactly where that is. So I'll send them just the the link to that folder. Or I'll know myself where I need to look. It's just a clean online storage solution is the best way of having a clean mind to be productive. Because you find things quicker and you won't have to think as much. It means more energy for other things. So it's not just beneficial to you either. So no matter how organized your clients are or no matter you know how many times you give them a link, they will lose the link. And so knowing exactly where it is and not having to go and collect all those files again because they're all over the place, having everything neat and ready to go, all exported in the same, the same quality output, you know, sometimes even in those folders, I've got a, a web section and then a print section. So it'll be like File and Soho, then all the years, and then inside those years, will be the individual, you know, the individual shoots that we did. And then inside that will be the web and the print. So I can easily just give them whatever it is that they need. Guess what I'm saying is if you need to send them any format, so you need to send them a year's worth, you you have a link for that. If you want to give them a specific shoot, you've got a link for that. You know, there's a lot of different options there. Number three, create your own Lightroom presets. I have a lot of Lightroom presets and a lot of them do 
Very similar things, but they're different. So once you've found your editing style and you know exactly what you're doing with editing, you're probably going to find you're doing the same thing over and over and over again. Increasing contrast, decreasing contrast, increasing sharpening. There's certain things that you're just going to do over and over and over again. And sure, you can do it manually, but this is about saving time. I have presets that they sharpen it a little bit. And I've got some presets that sharpen the image a lot. If I'm doing macro stuff, I'll always want to apply a certain amount of sharpening. And it's not a decision that I make. It's a mandatory application because I'm definitely going to put sharpening on something that's all about detail. So there's certain sort of use cases for that. And you can save a lot of time by having Lightroom presets. And it doesn't have to be one action. You can have, you know, a different color treatment. You can have a different increase of, of your sharpness if we want to use that. And it might do both of those in the one preset. It's up to you. So to create a Lightroom preset, you got to make the changes you want the preset to do. So do everything that you want the preset to do. And then... You go to the preset, the preset pane or preset panel, whatever you want to call it. There's a little plus icon there. Hit the plus and then you need to give it a name. So give it something you'll remember and choose a folder to keep it in. On the next screen, you want to uncheck all the boxes other than the types of adjustments that you just made. So it's only making those changes that you just made before. Then all you need to do is just click create and you're done. That's it. Once you have your preset created, you can apply it on import as well. So you don't even have to click it every time you go to a new photo. If you, for example, if I knew that all the photos on my card are macro photos, I just... When I import, I'll just say import with this preset and I'll choose my sharpening or my macro sharpening preset if I've given it an accurate name. So those kind of things that, you know, really speed up your process. Number four, inbox zero. Sounds pretty extreme. It sounds like a sci-fi movie, but... Last year, I just had so many emails sitting in my inbox. I'd read them all, and they're all sitting there because I meant to do something with them, meant to reply, meant to file them, I meant to download something, you know, so many different reasons why it was just sitting there. And I'd sat on them for so long that even though I knew that they were still there, the opportunity that they created had expired. Because if I had replied when it came in, it probably would have converted or it probably would have had whatever positive outcome I even kept it for in the first place. So I always told myself that I'd have more time to look at it later or I'll write a better response later. And it just sat there. And I remember a big sound last year. I was talking to Nick Yates from Unified and he's always so quick on the replies. I'm always like, man, you are so much busier than I am. How come you're always, you know, so good on the email replies? And he just said, I just do it. When an email comes in, I just reply to it. Just when it comes in, get it out. And it was such a simple thing, but it really did. It's such a simple thing, but it really resonated with me because if someone that busy can reply to an email, you know, weeks quicker than me, what's my excuse? I got nothing. So that put it in perspective. So ever since then, I like to keep my inbox down to zero. And that means the goal, even though there's always one or two, you know, sticking in there, 
you know, the goal is to have zero emails. Like you want to see inbox empty. You filed everything away. You've replied to everything. That's the goal. And it can be done. I do it from time to time, but it's kind of like a, you know, a fun, nerdy productivity challenge to try and reach inbox zero. The last one is arguably the easiest and the hardest thing at the same time. Number five is just do it. So when you're thinking of something, you know, you're thinking of something you have to do, just stand up and do it. You know, I'll do it later or I'll do it after I do this means that you're wasting time. Everyone deserves their own downtime and their time away from the camera or whatever it is that you feel anchored to from time to time. But this one's totally up to you. If you're honest with yourself, you'll know deep down if you're being lazy or you just need a break. It's totally cool to have a break, but you'll know deep down if you're honest with yourself. I stay motivated to get things done by thinking that while I'm sitting there and delaying things and putting things off and making excuses, someone else out there is taking those opportunities that could be mine if I was there to do something about it. So picturing that, picturing that reality, because that's what it is, is a reality, means that I start to get a little bit worried that I'm missing out on opportunities because I'm lazy puts a reality to it. So that is the fifth and final one. Just do it. I told you it was easy. I told you it was hard. But you're the only one that can do something about it. So that's my five tips. They all sound pretty easy and simple, but they make the world a difference to your productivity. The old saying of you miss 100% of the shots you don't take you know, it's it's so accurate with this stuff. I mean, the reason why everyone knows that saying is because everyone understands that that's accurate. So let's quickly answer one question just to keep that question and answer trend moving along. What do you think makes photography unique sent in by Laya Mendes? Laya Mendes. Guess what I think makes photography unique? Like, that's why I love photography. Because every single photo that's taken is unique. Even if you take a photo from the exact same spot as another photographer and use the exact same settings, you come back the following day, they'll be totally different photos. Because we apply our perspective on the photo during the editing phase. So we crop them differently. We draw the eye to different spaces in the photo. We darken other areas. Because our history shapes our perception of the environment or the subject. So we're talking years of imprinting onto the photos that we haven't even taken yet. I mean, that's, that seems so crazy, but that's what's happening because we've all got different perspectives of everything. And so it's not just when we hit the shutter, it's what we do after. Or if you're shooting with film, it's what film stock have you, have you used and how did you process it? So I love the unique stories that photos make. I think it's the artistic influence over a subject or a setting that makes photography unique. And I don't think you can control that. And that's what makes it interesting. That's what makes it even more interesting. All right, so that's it for this week. Thanks so much to everyone who rated the podcast. It's the best way of getting noticed by Apple and also getting on the featured podcast section. 
So go over there, give it a rating. Right now we're sitting on five stars. That's good. Most Uber drivers don't even have five stars anymore. But we have five stars. You know, do it now. Practice. Practice with rating the podcast. That's a good idea, actually. Practice your productivity for rating the podcast. You can also send in your questions at the Filter website by just going to filter.mountwalterphoto.com. Filter.mattwalterphoto.com. It's in the show notes and you could submit your question. Next week, we'll probably have the standard three questions. But this week, I thought we'd try something different, have more of a discussion piece, some advice, then the Q&A. But we still got a heap of questions sitting there, so we probably should whittle those down. So send in some more questions so we keep the jar full of good content because I want to help you guys. But for now, have an awesome week and make sure you be productive. And we'll see you on the same same time, same digital cyberspace next week. All right, have a good week, guys.